Okay. So do you have anything else to add? Well, uh, the other thing too is the um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have decided that they're going to drop again yeah. the number of non-owner occupied and second home loans that they're going to allow in their portfolios, which actually have opened up a new market sure. of lenders and they're called non-qualifying lenders and their interest rates are in the threes and fours for long-term buy and hold houses. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing that either. we have a program well, uh, that, again, that works for that. If you think about it, it's the same hedge funds that are buying the rental property. Yeah. So they got all this money. <laughs> so if I can't buy the house, I'll just loan the money out. Of one of those houses. <laughs> that's right. That's and right. And then if it goes sideways, I'll own the house and anyway, rent it out anyway. That's exactly right. But there's the, lots of companies out there. They don't want tax returns. They're just looking at bank statements and the income from the property yep. and projected income from the property. So it, it's so amazing. So if you think about it, there. if you want to uh, kind of transfer this into your short term rental, you could always give, because uh, most of these places are going to require at least a one year lease to mm -hmm. do a, a purchase mm -hmm. on it. But, and 20% but, but hey, uh, do a regular, if you're going to purchase one and you're going to get a deal on it, go ahead and do it as a one year rental. And then when that lease is up, go ahead and try the uh, short term. If yeah. it doesn't work out, you already know that it works That's for right. a, a longer term rental and That's you can right. always go back to doing it long term. That's exactly right. And, and you should have a, you should have more than one strategy in any property you buy anyway. Absolutely. So from a private lender, hard money lender perspective, uh, how is this, uh, slowing down on uh, retail sales uh, applying to us. It, so I'll tell you. It's how, awesome. Yeah. No, I mean, we're, we're still doing, <laughs> we're not doing as many single family loans as but, we had in the past. But we will because now there'll be more and more properties available for investors to find because it's hard for investors to find properties right no, now. No, They're really that. having to dig. But what are we doing in the meantime? Um, Going to Florida. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you know where I'm going here. <laughs> You're not following me. Remember, oh, <laughs> remember what our um, transcriber said, stop interrupting mm. me so I can finish my damn point. <laughs> Talk faster. So um, <laughs> what we're doing as a lender is we're, we're and, and we do this anyway, we have to take what the market's given us and mm -hmm. uh, make changes uh, where we need to. So we are doing a few more small, multi, smaller multifamily. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a few more smaller self storage. We're still staying in that re recession right, resistance state, right. but our number of smaller commercial loans have gone up a little bit mm -hmm. uh, than they have in the past. Mm -hmm. We're still focusing in on the uh, affordable housing. Right. Uh, the recession resistant housing. Uh, but uh, you're, you're going to have to make those adjustments. And, and a lot of people that are real estate investors that have been buying, buy and hold properties mm -hmm. and fix and flip. A lot of the fix and flip people are deciding, you know, uh, guess what? When the inventory uh, slows down, my uh, I'm in a transactional business. Mm -hmm. I need to be in more of a uh, ongoing monthly That's exactly revenue right. stream. So they they switch uh, horses, as it were, yeah. <laughs> and they get into the buy and hold uh, business. I have a dear so friend. Smaller that, multifamily is perfect. Mm -hmm. I, ha I have a dear friend. You have a dear friend. <laughs> okay, one who uh, has been in this business for over 20 years is a wholesaler, professional wholesaler that doesn't hold on to anything. And, and because of that, this friend is still in the grind, you know, every day, still in the grind, letting, letting his future pass him by because he's not holding on to anything. He's not getting anything as trading a residual. Yeah. He's trading his time for dollars. He's like a highly paid professional. Yeah. And, and you need to be thinking about that as an investor. What, what are you doing to, 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 to really plan for your future, to have that residual income, that mailbox money that's coming in. You do it through holding on to property sure. and you do it through lending. Right? Well, yeah. I mean, the whole point of being, Seller financing being is in the alternative uh, business world mm -hmm. is, I mean, you want to, you want to be free. You want to have I want to be uh, free. independence, mm -hmm. uh, not working for the man. Yeah, that's right. Or the woman. But you know, you're, <laughs> you're not truly going to be free unless you have uh, multiple streams of income That's right. that do not depend on you being at work daily. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can do that is by 
either lending or, or holding on the property and, and getting income from it. That's exactly right. right.